Hey, Daryl. Yeah, do you see what's on camera too? Okay, you guys got it, right? Because nothing came up in my system over here. Yeah, you know, I think it's a network again. It just doesn't have enough bandwidth to handle the SCADA system and the video surveillance. Yeah, we got to do something about it. This is just unacceptable. All right. Okay, you guys got it handled. I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye. Lots of SCADA operators have chosen to converge their video surveillance and their SCADA system into one network. And they do this for good reason. You get lots of advantages from this convergence. More efficiency, more integration, but there's also a potential pitfall, and that's network congestion. Administrators need to make sure that their SCADA and video surveillance systems will work well together, even when there's network congestion. Now, in the past, video solutions have tried to approach this issue by transmitting at a low frames per second to consume less bandwidth, and then increasing the frames per second in response to a local event, such as a fire alarm, motion detection, that sort of thing. But that's actually only half of the picture. Moxa's Dynastream offers a unique and exclusive new function. Dynastream can transmit at high frames per second and then lower the frames per second in response to a network-triggered event. This means that if the network is overworked, Moxa's vPort products can accept CGI, Modbus TCP, and SNMP commands and cut the video bandwidth consumption by lowering the frame rate. This gives the user even more flexibility in integrating their video surveillance and SCADA system. This is the web-based configuration for a vPort 461. As you can see, you can access it with a basic web browser, and it's pretty easy to use. The live frame rate is the video frame rate that the system will use when the network is behaving optimally. Once Dynastream is triggered, the system will switch to the alarm frame rate that you can set here. You can also preview the alarm frame rate performance in the screen right here to confirm that it's adequate for your needs. As you can see, Dynastream has many different triggering conditions. Digital input, CGI event, motion detection, and video loss. You can also customize how long you want Dynastream to last once it's triggered under duration, here. All right, let's take a look at Dynastream in action. Here is a SCADA network with video surveillance. In this simulation, We'll be using a SciTech SCADA system and a vPort 461 as the demo unit. Right now, the video is transmitting at 25 frames per second. And as you can see in this graph, it's actually consuming a substantial amount of bandwidth. But that's OK, because under normal network conditions, the system can handle this level of bandwidth consumption. But what happens if suddenly all the I.O. devices on the SCADA system need to be activated? Now we need those network resources back. That's where Dynastream kicks in. In this simulation, Dynastream will be activated by a CGI command. We've configured Dynastream to last for 10 seconds and to convert to five frames per second. And as you can see, the network bandwidth use of the video system has dropped dramatically and is only a fraction of what it was before. This means that the entire SCADA system has plenty of network resources to perform and operate normally. Once the 10 seconds is up, the system returns to 25 frames per second, and the video and the system return to normal. Dynastream is the first solution that allows you to both raise and lower your video surveillance bandwidth consumption to optimize your network management. This unparalleled flexibility means you have the freedom to customize a network management strategy that works right for your network. Dynastream systems are very responsive to network events, so you can seamlessly integrate your SCADA and video surveillance system without worrying about running out of bandwidth.